it's time to join Flora McCarthy and the Nationwide team now on One for news stories from the regions. On Nationwide this evening, curers are charlatans. The faith healer offered half a million pounds for a miracle. Limerick writers celebrate the work of one of their own, author Kate O'Brien. We catch the excitement as Dublin and Meath prepare for Sunday's Leinster football final. We'll have brief stories from around the country, summer entertainment in your area, and as always on Friday, Terry Willers has some fun with the regional newspapers. Well, the age-old practice of using faith healers goes back to biblical times, but many believe they're just charlatans, preying on the sick and distressed. One disbeliever, Gerald Fleming, originally from Clara County Offaly and now living in England, has offered internationally known faith healer Mary Malone half a million pounds to conduct a miracle in public. Now on her 12th world tour, Mary Fanning caught up with her in Burr. Mr. Running to you, and he thanks you for bringing them here tonight. Mary Malone gave up conventional lifestyle 13 years ago. She had the calling from God for years and eventually responded. The visionary, as she likes to be called, and her husband sold their printing business in England and started to tour the world. Internationally, she is known as the mother of all faith healers, but in Ireland she is merely Mary from Galway. Her publicity boards present at all her healing sessions bear witness to her fame, with hundreds of recommendations from journalists and broadcasters. Photographs with celebrities are also on show, along with a shrine of the Virgin Mary. She claims it's the power of the Holy Spirit working through her that allows her to cure. Just before I left Limerick, uh, 40 people came up to tell me that they were healed of various diseases, from cancer, from epileptic fits, um, from skin problems, from eye problems, from hearing problems, from not being able to sleep, all those things that were healed. And I said to them, I hope you went to the church and thanked God. But there are those who doubt Mary's gift and have offered her huge amounts of money to perform a miracle in public. The latest offer is half a million pounds. I couldn't respond to something like that because it is the Holy Spirit that's doing it. And he could take my healing gifts off me. He's given me healing hands, but that doesn't say that I'm any better than you or anybody else that's walking the street. I know what God has asked me to do, and I'm doing it. And if they can see it in that light, that's all right. I mustn't judge them either. Mary Malone is big in Ireland. Her recent trip to Cork had to be extended by four weeks because of popular demand. An individual session with Mary Malone costs £60 a head for half an hour. A session with 20 people costs £20 a head. And the public session, like the one here in Burr tonight, costs £5 a head. But her husband, Malcolm, who manages her around the world trips, says all of the money goes towards the expense of keeping them on the road. We've just uh, done six weeks in Cork and we stayed in one of the top hotels in Cork. The hotel suite that we had, not a room, a suite, was over £200 a day. You know, that's just the hotel suite. Why did you have to stay in a suite? Well, because uh, we had people coming to see Mary on a daily basis. I mean, you can't have people coming in a, 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 like a crappy place, you know what I mean? Mm. People like... Right, well, uh, 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 during that stay in Cork, and I said it to you on the telephone, uh, Mary was charging £60 for an individual session for half an for hour. half an hour, yeah. £60 is a lot of money. Yeah. Well, Mary puts a lot into it as well, you know. Most people don't mind paying that, you know. I mean, you go to see Frank Sinatra, it's £250 at the Point Depot, you know. There were no miracles in Burr, but people who went looking for cures did feel better after visiting Mary Malone. I've never visited any sort of faith healer up to this. Um, I feel she's a very genuine person. Just something about her. And I'd be very, very cynical. So, as I say, um, if it were at all possible, I would visit her again. I told her I had asthma, you know, and she put her hands to my chest. The heat of it. <laughs> I don't know what sort of a feeling it was at all. I tuned in well to her, but, um, and, you know, I, pick, I believe in her, and especially for this little fella. Um, I hope that she'll do something for him. He's worth it off. Great. Brilliant. I did. I felt that, that heat coming from her, and she told me my parents were with her while she was doing it. 
and that made me very emotional. So you believe her? I do indeed. Thank I'd up for Frank Sinatra. Limerick writers and artists have got together in a unique production to address what many regard as a debt to one of the city's most talented but neglected authors, Kate O'Brien. The Limerick Theatre Group Island are performing a written version of her book The Ante Room, adapted by Limerick man Kevin O'Connor and premiered at Limerick's Bell Table Theatre. Kate O'Brien, born into a prosperous merchant family in Limerick in 1897, a life which was the source of much of her inspiration in her career as a journalist and novelist. She began writing in 1926 and during her life she wrote nine novels. Many were bestsellers and some were banned by the censors. But despite this, she was excluded from the great writing tradition of her time, which included male authors like Joyce, O'Casey, Beckett and O'Fuelon. She was a middle-class woman writing about rural middle-class Ireland at a time when that very class shunned such illumination. Mary Call, who's director of the Bell Table Theatre, is one of the country's few experts on her fellow Limerick woman, Kate O'Brien. Kate O'Brien, as you know, was probably one of the more neglected of the Irish women writers, particularly, I think, in terms of the way in which Irish literary history has been presented. Um, she made her living as a writer at a time when it was neither popular nor easy as a woman to do so, as a journalist, as a writer of fiction, a travel writer, and produced a fine number of novels which were quite well received internationally, but um, ran into a lot of difficulties in Ireland because of the theme and content, and therefore I think uh, it was neither popular nor easy for Kate O'Brien to succeed at home. Well, what was her subject then? Why was she ostracised? She believed very strongly in the education of young women for independent careers. She had questions about the nature of society, sexual morality, marriage. Um, she probed into areas of family life which were often better left alone. And she ran into a headlong conflict with the Catholic Church and with the um, De Valera's Ireland, I think. It's Limerick's writers and actors who are now redressing the debt to their city's forgotten author. With a production of her book, The Ante Room, adapted by Limerick writer and broadcaster Kevin O'Connor and performed by Limerick Group, the Island Theatre Company. I think it conveys um, the, the pain at the heart of um, an unsuccessful love story and contrasts it with the, um, the, the, the joy at the heart of a successful one, though perhaps um, the, the successful one is a little surprising in terms of, the, uh, of, of what you might expect. Um, the core story of, of the play is of a woman who is in love with her sister's husband, um, and that cannot work out well. Um, however, her brother, who is allegedly cannot marry, finally does end up married in a most surprising way, and that's part of the joy of the play. Uh, the mother is upstairs, and, in, and she's dying, and that presence permeates the whole household. But as well as that, the Victorian morality of the time also permeates the household. And so there's a very strong sense of what might not be done, as opposed to our contemporary attitudes, which might be what can be done or may be done. And so that presence is very heavily, uh, weighs very heavily over the house. Um, and that's in the, the, the inability of characters to really express honestly what they might be feeling, particularly in relation to uh, sexual issues um, or in relation to sexual love. Can I get you a carriage? I don't think it would be in order for me to attend my family carriage. I can perfectly well make my way across the fields. See? I have my boots on. They're the latest. Warm inside. What pretty ankles they shape. Perfectly divine, as I've noticed. Show me. Master McQueen. There are not many pleasures left, nurse. It would mean so much to me. It's hoped the production of the Ante Room will generate interest in Kate O'Brien's work again, in many ways an author before her time, much if not all of whose work is very relevant to the 1990s. She needs to be put back into the picture. You can't write about Irish, you can't look at it historically, um, Irish writing in the 20th century and keep her out. She had something to say which was quite valid and still has a punch to it. Um, she was a good writer of fiction and wrote good stories and that's what she was primarily concerned with. And it was interesting to look, it still is interesting to look at her work, to see how it fits into the history of Irish writing. And as a Limerick writer in particular, she should be regarded um, more 
celebrate it more in her own city. If Dublin is quite prepared to make a considerable amount of capital out of Joyce and Beckett, I don't see why Limerick shouldn't start to promote Kate O'Brien more actively. And the anteroom runs at the bell table until August Asselbar. Yeah, this is a festival that actually started out as a result of a tragedy. It happened, it's called the McConville Cup. It started uh, because three, in 1993, two brothers from Armagh, unfortunately, were drowned in the lake. So as a result, they commemorated this competition to him. And now they have anglers coming from the north down to the south. So it's, an, it's a marvellous way of forging contacts between the north and the south. So the tragedy has actually turned out to be a happy event in the end. Well, it sounds like there's lots of fun to be had in the west. Thanks very much for joining us, Joan, and bringing us up to date. Well, the Wandering Nationwide team is still on the road and next week we'll be visiting Croke Patrick on Monday and the Bell Turbot Festival of the Urn on Wednesday. Now with some brief stories from around the country and first to County Leitrim. There may not have been an open-air failure this summer, but the Drum Chorus City Western Style Ranch in County Leitrim is set to host one of the largest outdoor musical events of the year. Country and Western stars from all over the country are coming to the venue near Ballinamore on the August Bank Holiday Monday for what's described as the Wild Western Hoolie, a mixture of top-class musical entertainment and American rodeo performances. Few politicians are remembered with more affection than the late Gerry O'Sullivan, former Minister of State at the Department of the Marine. One time Lord Mayor of Cork, the present incumbent, Alderman Jim Corr, attended a formal naming ceremony of a new tractor tug in honour of the man known to many in Cork as Jerry. Family and friends gathered on board for the ceremony, during which Minister for State Hugh Coveney said that the former minister would have liked the idea of a working monument rather than a static one. The new 44-tonne bollard pull tractor tug is one of the most versatile and manoeuvrable operating in Irish waters. A reminder to all on land and on sea of the man after whom it is named. Achill Islanders are justly proud of their first RNLI lifeboat. Based in Clue Bay, close by one of Grand New Wales castles, the powerful 44-foot-long Waveney-class craft fills a vital gap between the two nearest all-weather boats on the western coastline. Ballyglass, in ideal conditions, takes about four hours to get travel the distance. The boat from the Iron Islands could take four and a half hours and where here is, is the centre of the area where this boat will operate from. It has a range of something like 260 miles at sea. Um, the, when a call out takes place, uh, the ideal optimum here is to, from the emergency call out, 20 minutes to the boat going. How do you look forward to the day when you get your first call out? Well, we're looking forward to it, we're not looking forward to it. Hopefully it's not going to be too serious and people aren't going to lose their lives, but that's what we're here for. We're here no matter what the conditions to get out there and do our very best. Intensive training for the crew will soon be complete. Meantime, they appeal to anyone faced with an RNLI collection box to support this voluntary service generously. Particularly people who are uh, using water for business or for leisure purposes and even those that aren't have friends and relatives who are and would never know the day when the lifeboat might, might be needed to come to their rescue. <laughs> Gorey's town commissioners are a considerate bunch, the Gorey Guardian reports. At last week's meeting, the topic of men who like to sit on Main Street was discussed. One commissioner informed the others that while wives and sweethearts are doing their shopping or getting their hair done, the men enjoy a sit-down and a chat. He called for loose seating on Main Street, which would work better than fixed benches, for comfort and convenience. And comfort is top of the list in Cashel, the Tipperary Star reports. Following in the footsteps of the Dart, the town has just launched its own Cashel Area Rapid Transit. Tourists trekking through the streets will become a thing of the past, now that the brand new tram from Germany can whisk them around the Heritage Trail in style. It might be time to put a padlock on your milk bottle, the Coleraine Chronicle reports. A young man was caught stealing milk from a doorstep in Bushmills. The crime has puzzled investigators who wonder why.